Welcome to worship with us at Emmanuel Lutheran Church on this Holy Trinity Sunday. Some announcements before we begin. First of all, today, June 7th at 10.30 Pacific time, we're gonna be having a virtual hymn sing led by our director of choir, Stephanie Young. Uh, and so if you're somebody who wants to participate in that and you're watching it currently on Sunday morning, um, we invite you to go to the Zoom link. It's gonna be held via Zoom that is printed in your bulletin. It's emailed along with the bulletin that was emailed earlier this week. Uh, go ahead and click on that and join us by Zoom. Again, that's at 10.30. Um, also want to remind you that we're going to be having a summer book club. I'll be leading a book club on the book Listening for God, Volume 1. And today, Sunday, June 7th, is the last day to let me know if you're interested in joining that. So email me at pastorkate at elclh.org. Uh, once we have all the names in, then I'll be emailing those who are interested to set up a date for us to, to, to um, start that club. We also wanted to let you know of a new ministry this week that was initiated by your church council that we're calling the Prayer Patrol. Uh, we know that many people have been missing seeing each other at church face to face. And while still practicing safe measures, a small group from Emmanuel visited a few of those church members in their homes. We said hello, we prayed together, and had a wonderful way just to reconnect. And we even got to crash a 94th birthday this week. So if you would like a driveway visit or know someone who could benefit from this, or if you would like to participate in one of our upcoming visits, please contact the church office. Uh, also, you'll notice today I'm doing the announcements from our baptismal font. And there's a rose on our baptismal font today for Terry Clow. It's our tradition at Emmanuel that whenever we have a new life, a new baby born into our community, we place a rose on the altar signifying that new life. It is also our tradition that when one member of our community dies, we place a rose on the baptismal font, reminding us of the new life that they now live in Jesus Christ and remembering that baptismal covenant made to us so long ago. And so today we'll be lifting up Terry's family and lifting up his life um, to our Lord. Also note about our service. Today there is gonna be no children's message recorded in the service, so we invite any children who are interested to join Marianne Carlson uh, on her recorded Sunday school lesson. You can find out all the places that you're watching this worship service. It's a continuation of Jesus walking on the water, so we invite you to join her for that. Uh, also at the end of the bulletin that was emailed to your families, there are three activity pages. There's a few coloring pages and also a word search that look at Trinity Sunday. So we invite you to participate in any of those ways. Also, our sermon for today is provided for us by the ELCA presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, clergy and deacons in our denomination were informed that Bishop Eaton would be providing a filmed sermon uh, that we are welcome to use for this Sunday, for Trinity Sunday. Now, I don't think any of us could have imagined three or four weeks ago what our nation would be looking like right now. And I know that when the bishop selected this day, Trinity Sunday, as a day to speak to the churches across the country, that it would be a Sunday following weeks of peaceful protests and violent riots, of destruction born out of hate and, and anger and systemic change being created anew out of deep listening and understanding. After her sermon, I will be sharing a few words with you also. And I know that Bishop Eaton and I are both going to be talking about what has been happening in our country. We're going to be talking about racism and what can be our Christian response to violence. So if you are somebody who has been watching the news 24 seven or are constantly scrolling through your social media and you feel like you just need a breath before unpacking what we as people of Christ are called to do in the face of evil, then this is the glory of online worship. Just pause for now. Just pause and take a break. Take a breath. Watch a different service. Watch one of Emmanuel's services from a few weeks ago. Watch the Easter service and be reminded that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah that even in the darkest of nights, Christ is risen. And then, when you're ready to do the hard work of asking, 
how God can use you as an instrument of peace. Then come back and join us for this worship service. You may have heard the oft-quoted phrase that the gospel comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable. I think the gospel is doing both of those things right now. And so on this Holy Trinity Sunday, we welcome you to worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us confess together our sins before God as together we pray our confessional prayer. The words to this prayer can be found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have sinned by things said and left unsaid, by things we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not followed your commands. 
We have not trusted in your ways. We have put ourselves before others. We repent of our ways and want to do better with your help. Have mercy on us and forgive our sins by the power of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross and took with him the sins of the world, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please pray with me. Blessed triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are a God of relationship, forming creation in your collective image. We pray that during this time when we are facing the difficulty of physical isolation from quarantine and the heaviness of racial injustice in our world, that you would awaken your Holy Spirit within us, cause us to live beyond ourselves, and reflect your love for our neighbor. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. The first lesson this Holy Trinity Sunday is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 4. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on the earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind, bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly over the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. 
God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the birds of the air, and the over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, and because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. There are generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Our psalm today is Psalm 8. Please read along. The words can be found in your bulletin. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands you have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, and the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second lesson this morning is Second Corinthians 13, verse 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Here end the lessons. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, 
I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began, Martin Luther put it this way, so also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up, all of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how. But I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. 
we in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, 
we can make that a reality. Amen. While Bishop Eaton was speaking to all of us as the national church, as the churchwide expression, I want to take this moment to offer some words directly to you, people of Emmanuel. Last week, I shared with you my Pentecost fire, my Holy Spirit marching orders, and that they were to face my fear and my cowardice and to be the person that God is calling me to be and to work towards addressing and dismantling systemic racism. I received some comments from you thanking me and from people who are also feeling convicted by the Holy Spirit. I also received some comments from people essentially reminding me that police are good people too and that they need our respect. I agree with you. There are bad police officers out there who use excessive violence who operate under racist motives, but there are also a lot of good officers out there too, supporting the Black Lives Movement and supporting good police work are not mutually exclusive. As Lutherans, we love to live in the tension in between things. It's what our theology is based on, law and gospel, saint and sinner divine and human, death and new life, quarantine and together. It's the both and where we live our lives. You see, most of my interactions with the police have been here in La Habra, and I know not every police department is upright and not every police officer is virtuous. But in my 11 years living and, and working in La Habra, one of the things that has always impressed me is how hard the local police and their police chief, Jerry Price, have worked to be made known in the community. So this past week, I talked with Chief Price and I asked him, what are you doing differently? And he said, nothing. We're not doing anything differently. We're just working to build trust in our community and we show up at events and get to know our neighbor. But you see, Chief Price, that's not nothing. There is great power in just showing up. As many protesters over this past few weeks have found, there is power in just showing up. And then he shared with me two other things that I wanted to share with you. First of all, Chief Price said, well, we try really hard to listen because often people just want to be heard. And I thought, yep, that is what a lot of this hard work is about. Not injecting my opinion or, or, or my opinions saying that the other guy is wrong, but deeply listening to those who are different and hearing their story. And I think in that, we're able to see the image of God in another. The other thing that Chief Price shared with me is that he says to his officers as they are joining the La Habra Police Department, treat people better than they're going to treat you. Now, maybe it's a vocational hazard, but I can't hear that and not hear a glimpse of the scripture in that. From the Gospel of Matthew, treat others as you would have them treat you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Don't treat them in the same way or in a vengeful way, but treat them in a way that you would have them treat you, our Savior says. I don't know about you, but if I were feeling marginalized or discriminated, I would want to be heard. I would want to be seen as a beautiful and beloved creation of the triune God. And so this is my task for you this week, beloved people of God. Who in your life or your family or your community needs to be heard? And who are you willing to listen to? 
Because if we are intentional about our relationships, if we do the hard work of listening to each other, then maybe, just maybe, we can see in others the face of God. Amen. At this time, we thank you for your offering that you continue to give for the ministry of Emmanuel. We thank those of you who are mailing in your offering, those of you who are using the online options for online giving and text to give found on our church website. We give you thanks that your gifts are a sign of your trust in God and trust in the ministry that we are continuing to do here at Emmanuel and the blessings that we receive, we are able to then go out and bless the world around us. And so we lift up thanks to God for your blessings and for the blessings that he first gave us. If you would like a prayer request for the Sunday worship, we ask that you please contact the church office by Wednesday so we can include it in our filming for our worship. And now let us pray. Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in our fractured world, hurting from epidemic that is attacking our bodies, an epidemic that is attacking our souls. Be the bridge that allows us to see and be seen, to hear and be heard, and above all, see each other as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we continue with our prayers for the nations, this week we lift up to you the country of Belize, we ask, Lord, that you would intercede in this country as they are seeing a rise in the amount of drug and human trafficking that is happening in their small country. We pray that those forces of evil would lay, that would lay waste the lives of people and countries of Central America would be conquered by your victorious Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we lift up to you your servant, Terry, who now rests with you in your eternal kingdom. We give you thanks for his life on this earth and pray that he would rest from his labors in the arms of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We know that God hears all that we ask for, and we take this time to lift our prayers up to the Lord silently and aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll now continue our worship service with our baptismal blessing. As we have been doing throughout this time that we are a part, we remember the sacramental promise that God has called us to be his children and so we are called forth into the world. I invite you to grab a small dish and place some oil in it. Whatever you have in your house will be fine. And then I invite you to either make the sign of the cross on your forehead if you are worshiping alone or on the forehead of one of the people who may be in your household. And we invite you to repeat these words as you make the sign of the cross. First, say the name, Kate. Beloved child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. In peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.